Uh, today I wanted to uh, take some time and go through a demonstration of our document optimization and OCR solution PDF compressor with OCR. Um, so you can see here I've opened up the user interface of the tool. Um, when we first open up the software, you'll see that we have a, a quick setup wizard. It allows you to set up a simple run or optimize your settings. Um, a lot of our users will, will do this the first time around just to sort of save settings that they're comfortable with. Um, you can see it's basically just a, a quick questionnaire about your documents. Um, do you want to make them searchable or not? Are they black and white, color and grayscale, or both? What the output documents should be? You can go through this step by step and we'll generate a couple documents for your to review and then you can save those settings or try to go through it again to get better settings for your documents. Um, I'm not going to go through this in, in great detail today, but instead I'm going to go through a demonstration of some of our other settings that you can see here on the left nav bar. So here you can go in and select the documents that you want to process. I'll do that as we after we go through some of the actual settings here. Uh, the job that I'm going to run, it's going to be a batch compression and OCR job. We also have the ability to set up wash folder compression. So this is similar to a, a high folder setup where you would essentially just set up a single input location. Um, anytime a file were to hit that input location or the other folder location, you'll be, the software will automatically pick up the document, process it, and place it in the separate output location. Um, a lot of our users will do this to, to help to automate the process of, of actually processing documents and compressing and OCRing them. So to go through some of our settings here, we have a couple of different pre-processing uh, methodologies that we put in place to help clean up documents and enhance the OCR accuracy. Uh, one just being to clean that document up, another being to speckling. Speckling is a little bit more aggressive and we, uh, we typically recommend that our clients will uh, you know, just test documents out before using it because it can uh, definitely um, overclean the document when OCR. You can also just smooth the documents out um, and also uh, everything can be set up depending on the actual document type. So you can separate it for your black and white images, grayscale images, and color images. Also on the PDF input processing, we have a couple different settings here, one being stream mode. This will retain the individual content stream of documents, and the other is rasterizing the document. I typically will recommend rasterizing PDFs. Um, it's going to allow our software to essentially break down a PDF and build it back up. So what you'll see is better OCR recognition as well as uh, enhanced compression ratios. We also have the ability to crop documents. You can de-skew and, and rotate them. Uh, one of the nice features here is, and one that I like to use, is basically to automatically rotate all pages to their readable orientation. So what this will do is if someone were to scan in a couple documents and a few pages were upside down in that document, based on what we see with that document and what the software um, recognizes, we'll be able to rotate it so that it's in readable orientation so a user doesn't really have to uh, worry about that when scanning the documents. You also have the ability to invert color on documents, so this will essentially change black to white and white to black. Now our output options, I usually just go with auto selection of the, uh, of the PDF version, but we also do offer the ability to convert directly to PDFA. Um, so that's a, a nice feature there. We also have the ability to, to merge or split documents. Um, you can merge all inputs into a single output file, or you can split multi-page files every set number of pages. So if you knew that every 10 pages you wanted to create a new document, you could do that right here. Here are some of our uh, compression settings. We have auto segmentation um, for documents as well as individual settings for bitonal, grayscale, and color compression. Uh, the bitonal compression filter that I like to use is JBIG2. On the grayscale compression and the color compression, um, we have the ability for both JPEG and JPEG 2000. In our recognition settings, um, I can just check off on include recognition and this will OCR the documents. Um, I usually will recommend that our users will go with a, uh, our accurate OCR analysis mode. I would say that 96 to 97 percent of our end users will use this analysis mode um, and it's, it's very good. Uh, the only time that I would recommend to go to, to super accurate is if you're dealing with something that's uh, an image that's been severely degraded, 
um, might have uh, vertical text as well as horizontal text on there. Um, that might be a time when you want to use the uh, super accurate processing mode. Now I've set up this batch to run to really only look for, for English. Well, we have over 120 different languages that we do support. If you need to add languages, you can just go here and then you just check off on the languages that you need to, uh, to OCR. We do offer some advanced analysis on documents and then on our output options, we can store OCR data um, as words or lines. Um, and then we can also have the, offer the ability to generate auxiliary data files. So some of the data files that we can generate for the OCR text is plain text, uh, Unicode text, XML, um, Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoints, etc. Communications, we do have the ability to define an FTP location and pull those documents from that FTP location uh, to be processed through the software. Uh, we have the ability to optimize files for the web. Uh, the web optimization is a nice feature and it allows for page at a time display if you're putting documents up on a website or an internet site um, it makes it a lot easier to uh, to pull documents down for a network user or um, someone that has their documents stored in a cloud you can enter in some custom information about the document so if you'd like to enter in an author uh, title subject keywords for the document that could all be done here as well as metadata insertion and then um, viewer preferences can also be adjusted here. And then annotations, we also have the ability to enter in custom headers, footers, stamps, and watermarks. And then finally, security, um, we can, if incoming PDFs have passwords, you can enter that here, we can decrypt it, and then OCR and, and compress the document, and we'll also enable some feature permissions here. Now we've gone through just a, a number of the settings here, I just want to go, go ahead and set up our batch. I'm just going to select our input location. I'm going to just drag and drop a folder right down here. Um, by default, we're going to output to the same folder. I'm going to change it to a separate output folder. Okay. Um, we also, when processing in a, a batch job and there might be subfolders, you can include those subfolders. And when we do that, you're able to replicate the recursive structure of that input folder. So if you have a, a root folder that has 100 subfolders, um, rather than recreating those manually, the software will replicate that and create those 100, 100 subfolders in a separate location for you. You can also merge all the output files into a single file. The file types that we can compress are, are listed here. Um, for this job, it's TIFF, PDF, JPEG, and PNG. But here is a breakdown of all the different file types that we are able to compress in OCR. For the processed input files, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just leave them in the current location. And then any, we'll also just create an error folder just for any failed files. The only time that I've seen a files error out is if it's an unsupported document type. Uh, so for example, if someone were to put a Word document in here, um, another document type that uh, we're not able to support, um, basically it would go into this folder location. And when it does, the nice thing about it is that it will not stop the batch. So if you're processing thousands of documents and we error out on one, we're still going to finish processing that entire batch. It will not, uh, it will not cancel it out. All right. So this is all now set up. I'm just going to show you a couple of files that we're going to process today. Give you an idea of what they look like. So here are a couple of files, about six megs each. There's a magazine article here. Same thing here. And then we have some TIFF files that are uh, just standard black and white documents. Okay. All right, now that that's done, I'm just going to run our job here. this will kick off the processing. The, uh, the software is designed to leverage multi-threading. Um, so what that will do, it will process documents on the total number of cores that are found on the machine that the software is installed on. Uh, so for example, I have a, a quad-core laptop. I'm able to process four documents concurrently. 
Um, so what that means is that you can um, increase the processing speed of these solutions simply by adding uh, cores to the machine that, uh, that you install the software on. So for example, if I were to, uh, to have the software installed on an eight core machine, it would mean that I can process eight documents at the same time. 16 cores, 16 documents at the same time. So it will just naturally increase the processing speed. Depending on the, uh, the quality of the images that are, are being processed, um, if they're severely degraded, uh, it will take longer to, to process those documents. If it's a, a good quality scan or um, an electronically generated PDF, um, we'll see that those documents are processed a lot faster. And really depending on the, the quality of that document, I would say that the total time to, uh, to OCR and compress them it's about three to five seconds uh, per page, per core of the machine that the software is installed on. So as this is finishing up, I'm just going to jump over to our, uh, to our output location, and we can take a look at the uh, process files as well as the, um, the original files just kind of get a comparison of, uh, of size as well as um, the text searchability on the documents. So I'll just open those up now. Okay, so as this is finishing up, I'll just show you our input location again and then our associate output. You can see as this is going, we're generating the files on the fly here. Temp files are first created and then they will convert over to PDF. Uh, we retain the original name of all the documents as well. So you can see that each of the documents uh, here are, um, are named based on the original file name and they're all converted over to PDF. So as this finishes up, you can see the first one here, our BW image 005, started off as a six megabyte file um, it's now dropped down to about a 78 kilobyte file. Um, when ending in 007, again about 6 megs, and it's down to 77 kilobytes. And another one here, um, when ending in 024, has dropped down to 83 kilobytes. So I'll just show you a side by side comparison of the original and the uh, newly generated file. So you can see here, there's really no, uh, no image de degradation at all. Um, the file on the right is the one generated by PDF Compressor. It's been converted to PDF. Uh, it's fully text searchable, so if I hold Control A, everything will, uh, will highlight that is searchable. Um, Control F on my keyboard, and I can search for phrases and words that are found within here. So I can see CEO is found in here. And we'll automatically be able to identify that. Now the compression ratios on the on the color images are, are very significant. We see compression ratios as high as 100 to 1. On black and white is also very strong. Um, typically it can be as high as 10 to 1. So I'll just show you quickly a uh, black and white image. This is the original here. generated PDF. You can see this is again fully text searchable. All right, and that concludes uh, today's demonstration. Um, just want to thank everyone for, uh, for checking out our video. If there are any questions that uh, we can help to answer, please come visit our website or uh, reach out to us directly. Thanks again.